Good afternoon, members. I welcome all members. I'd like to remind you that the virtual mini plenary is deemed to be in the precinct of parliament and constitutes a meeting of the National Assembly for debating purposes only. In addition to the rules of virtual sittings, the rules of the National Assembly, including the rules of debate, apply. Members enjoy the same powers and privileges that apply in a sitting of the National Assembly. Members should equally note that anything said in the virtual platform is deemed to have been said to the House and may be ruled upon. All members who have logged in shall be considered to be present and are requested to mute their microphones and only unmute when recognized to speak. This is because the mics are very sensitive and will pick up noise, which might disturb the attention of other members. When recognized to speak, please unmute your microphone and connect your video. Members may make use of the icons at the bar at the bottom of their screens, which has an option that allows the member to put up his or her hand to raise points of order. Secretariat will assist in alerting the chairperson to members requesting to speak. When using the virtual system, members are urged to refrain or desist from unnecessary points of orders or interjections. We shall now proceed to the order of this mini plenary session, which is a subject for discussion in the name of Honorable S. N. August on, on why South Africa can no longer afford to delay implementing a permanent basic income grant to address basic needs and dignity of its, of its most marginalized citizens. I now recognize Honorable August from, to speak. Honorable Chairperson, I firstly apologize for the video due to bad signal. Honorable the Minister of Social Development, members of the House, thank you for the opportunity to pre present a debate on the good party's call for the urgent implementation of a basic income grant. Before I begin, on behalf of Good, I would like to express our deepest condolences to the royal family and the Zulu nation on the past passing of His Majesty King Goodwill Zuelatini. May he rest in peace. Honorable Chair, in the toughest of economic times that we are now in, we know that there will be people who question if this country can afford it. In our view, that question is incorrectly framed. It should be, can we afford not to? This is not a new debate. In 2002, the Taylor Committee report recommended implementing a basic income grant. But the government of the day had other priorities such as funding the arms deal. At the time, the poverty level was in decline. But for the past decade, the most vulnerable members of our population have faced increasingly difficulties to feed, clothe, and shelter their families. Stats SA and World Bank data of the past 10 years record rising unemployment, declining per capita GDP, and an incre increasing proportion of South Africans living in poverty. One in four South Africans live below the poverty line, according to the Human Rights Commission. Then, when we could least afford it, the COVID pandemic struck to expose how serious it really is. The chronic situation that we are in is not because we are a poor country, without any resources. It is because of poor decision-making by government. It is because government prioritized other things besides emerging vast sums of money to the looting brigade. Among apartheid's defining characteristics was inequality. 27 years into our democracy, we remain the most unequal society on earth. With precious few exceptions, the racial pattern of inequality mimics that of apartheid. It is a gross betrayal of the poor and is unsustainable. It is unsustainable for families to be expected to survive on fresh air alone without any money. 
It is unsustainable to send children to school with just sugary tea in their stomachs. It is unsustainable, unsustainable for the unemployment to seek work if they can't afford a train ticket or data to submit their CV. It's unsustainable to live in such an unequal society. For how long do we imagine we can stretch this rubber band before it snaps? Honorable members, we have to start somewhere. And one of the good things the COVID lockdown delivered was to amplify the crisis that is the daily life reality of poor families. It forced government to confront the necessity for urgent relief of the poor and this resulted in the impl implementation of the temporary COVID-19 social relief grant. Now we must make this temporary relief permanent. The sooner we do so, the sooner we demonstrate our compassion and commitment to justice for all. The sooner we can begin to build the bridges of common purpose that a sustainable society needs. Reachers, researchers say that if we implemented the basic income grant in 2002, many people would have been able to struggle their way out of poverty by now. We cannot change the past, but we can change the future. Honorable Chair, a basic income grant is a matter of life and death for those who do not know where the next meal will come from. It is a means to restore dignity, alleviate trauma, and provide a glimmer of hope for a better life. It is a time for government to take good decisions that will create stable foundations for inclusive growth. Decisions that are good for rich and poor South Africans alike, that recognize the inherent dignity of all and our dependence on each other. We already provide grants to the elderly, disabled and to children. In many instances, these grants are the only income sustained extended families. But many of our most vulnerable citizens are elderly, disabled, or with children. They are unemployed, youth and adults who are marginalized and starving. With an official unemployment rate of 32%, millions of our compatriots fall into this category. What is our message to them? What should they do? Chairperson, good is disappointed the COVID-19 grants are scheduled to stop. This is a mistake. What happens in May and June? Chronic poverty won't simply disappear. The temporary COVID-19 grant have been usually important. The process has developed databases and contact details for the most vulnerable people in the country and the technology, technological ability to distribute the relief. Now we must find a way to implement the temporary grant as a permanent basic income grant. The BIG must be developed with all our social partners' involvement, including NEDLAC, the Department of Social Development and Civil Society Organizations. Of course, the big question is how do we, how to fund it? The reported 500 billion lost to corruption and mismanagement before places this number into perspective. This huge amount of money proves we can afford a BIG if this government, government directs its budgets to where they are most needed. If our law enforcement agencies could recover this money lost to corruption, it would make an excellent start. Thereafter, it's about weighing priorities. It's about managing government's expenditure on itself, managing waste, maladministration and corruption. But mostly, it's about realizing that no nation can thrive when millions of its people are suffering just as no plane can take off without fuel in the tank. It's not about charity, but necessity, and will benefit us all. Good therefore calls on all political parties to support a basic income grant. It shouldn't be about politics, but about our common basic humanity. We cannot leave our citizens to starve on the streets. 27 years ago, we celebrated that we teamed the new South Africa. We have made mistakes and taken each other for granted. Implementing a basic income grant affords us the opportunity for a new beginning, to create sustainable country in which all people are regarded as equal, equally precious. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable August. I now recognize Honorable Mbana. 
Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm also encountering a load shedding, so I might switch off my video, Chair. Chairperson, this big, that is basic income grant, provides the historical call by the ANC and the MDM structures. Honorable Chairperson, the ANC Reconstruction and Development Program significantly noted that no political democracy can survive or flourish if the mass of our people remains in poverty. Without land, without tangible prospects for a better life, Attacking poverty and deprivation must therefore be the first priority of our democratic government. It is within the context that I briefly state the discussion of introducing a comprehensive social security system to meet the basic needs of our people and the introduction of a basic income grant that is big. This is really not a new discussion, as honorable, previous honorable have said. These discussions are there in our policy documents, and they are underpinned by the theory of social development. That is a key tenant in the building of a social protection system that is responsive to human development economic inclusion and social stability. Our policy, policy position are based on the urgent task of improving the lives of the people through the development programs. A key component to the envisioned development social welfare is on the need to develop a national social security system to meet the needs of workers in both the formal and informal sectors and of the unemployed. It must be noted, Chairperson, that the social security system inherited by the democratic government has fundamental gaps which needed to be urgently addressed through policy research commissioned by the Congress of South Africa, that is COSATU in 1997 then. Then that uh, uh, research revealed gaps in the social security system and alternative solutions were provided to address these challenges. One of the main findings was that the introduction of uh, BIC would be the most effective way of addressing the defects in the social security system inherited from the apartheid regime. This research gave COSATI to staunchly advocate in the 1998 job summit and in 2000 conference on jobs and economy for the introduction of the peak in South Africa. That person I would like also to, to, to say that the 1997 white paper on social welfare, which is a legislative expression of the ANC, is RTP, notes in its clauses that every South African should have a minimum income sufficient to meet basic subsistence needs and should not live below minimum acceptable standards. What the ANC was seeking to address through the progressive introduction of a big, The ANC and its alliance partners through the progressive introduction of the big, address the realities of growing poverty and the inadequacy of the inherited social security system. This is one of the reasons that the ANC in the late 90s and early 2000s proactively advocated for the reformation of the social security system and the introduction of 
a beak. The beak was viewed as a vehicle that would significantly reduce poverty, unemployment, and inequality. The ANC continues to commit to the implementation of a comprehensive social security system. It is argued that a basic income grant may be considered as an integral part. Um, this system, as it is important in addressing the plight of the poor and the unemployed. The introduction of a big for the unemployed has the ability to boost the economy, help our people to provide for their basic needs. The other point, Chair, there is a writer by Victor Hugo who was correct when he said, open inverted commas. There's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come, close quote. The lockdown has exposed the social economic challenges that are confronting our economy. The monumental poverty headcount in 2015 drawing from the living conditions survey indicated a 25,2% population living below the food uh, poverty lines. These conditions get a person speak to deeper structural problems of the economy, which remains unchanged and is contributing to increasing levels of poverty and unemployment and deepening levels of inequality. The big is viewed as one of the most effective ways of addressing income poverty. One of the major recommendations by the 2002 Taylor Committee was the introduction of big to combat poverty. It asserted that big had a potential more than any other possible social protection intervention to reduce poverty, promote human development and sustainable livelihoods, and is easier to roll out in the short term than offer poverty programs. These assertions were supported by the big coalition, which urged that a big would alleviate poverty and provide all households with a minimum level of income to enable them to for a better uh, the basic needs. Stimulate equitable economic development, promote family and community stability, and affirm and uphold the inherent dignity of all people. Uh, lastly, Chairperson, originated from the research and submission made to the job summit and job and economic, economic conference, there is sufficient scientific evidence to support the call for the progressive introduction of PIC as part of a comprehensive social security system. It will also be an important solution to advance the social transformation agenda pursued by ANC-led government. It will be instrumental for economic and human and human development and will be fundamentally to the restoration of the dignity of the majority of our people. We must ensure that the big can be a tool to achieve some of the key priorities of the government, which includes ensuring that with this decade, we end, we end and eradicate poverty and inequality. Evidence-based research from developing countries such as uh, Brazil, Kenya, and Namibia, which I physically visited, Jefferson, uh, who albeit for a short period conducted studies and pilot projects by rolling out a big indicate that uh, the positive impact yields that big had in addressing social economic challenges. Counter to a popular view that a big will entrench dependency 
big recipients from these countries have proven that it can be used to assist the poor, um, poor to the enter economy activity, which has helped them break the poverty trap. Chairperson in Brazil, it has helped promote greater participation of women in the labor market, as well as school going children. This means that it created a degree of economic independence, which empowered women and other vulnerable groups, such as female and child headed families. In conclusion, Chairperson. Thank you. Let's the stop. Thank you. Okay. Thank yes, Chepesin. It's Thank us you. who said better life for all. That's Thank why we support the establishment of the Chepesin. I now invite Honorable Masango. Salo Oshon Pegile, Mangezulise Amazui, Enduduzo, Emdenin was of Kosini, Nesizo Samezulu, Ungo Kotama, where Silo Samabanj. Honorable Chepesin. The recent announcements on the basic income grant have received considerable coverage from near and far. They have been hailed by some as the answer to a country that has one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. This is understandable given the devastating effects of the COVID-19 lockdown on South Africa's workforce, where many people, most of them breadwinners, lost their jobs. South Africa was already buckling under the increasing levels of unemployment, rendering 49.2% of the population over the age of 18 to fall below the upper bound poverty line. On the 23rd of April, 2020, the Honorable President Cyril Ramaphosa announced a set of safety net interventions to cushion our society against the economic and human consequences of the lockdown. These included a solidarity fund financed mainly by voluntary donations, a temporary employee relief scheme for employees of companies in distress, and a tax subsidy for low income private sector workers. Regardless of these interventions, several groups remain at high risk of collapse because of a lack of protection from the state. Current data suggests that there are between 9 million and, 5 and 15 million people who do not have access to a social grant or to the TERS. Already the global COVID-19 pandemic has led to severe economic and labor market shocks. The impact of unemployment has been severe for countless people, particularly those in the formal sector, service sector, and or performing manual routine jobs. In South Africa today, social protection for the poor is very limited. This is due in the main to people missing out on child based or family based social protection systems and who still do not have access to an employment based social protection system. These gaps in access can adversely impact people's lives and generate negative consequences that will be felt long term. In the current COVID-19 pandemic, inclusive social protection is even more vital to protect particularly young people who are already at a higher economic and social risk. The reasons why South Africans can no longer afford to delay the implementation of the basic income grant have been valid for decades. Under these increasingly difficult conditions, which has been triggered by this government's poor decisions and a, lot, a lack of political will when it comes to the poor and vulnerable, millions of additional South Africans have joined the ranks of those dependent on grants. Despite the country's blip, bleak picture, the government has made numerous promises backed by billions of rands in funding in various areas of the economy. As usual, along with these promises comes disappointment. The basic income grant being the biggest promise and the biggest disappointment. From as early as 2002, when South Africa's extended unemployment rate was sitting at 37% with a population of 46 million, the ANC proposed the basic income grant in the consolidated report of the Committee of Inquiry into a comprehensive solution 
social security system for South Africa. It highlighted the need for a basic income grant and even made reference to how the HIV AIDS pandemic had exacerbated unemployment and poverty. Research conducted by the committee found that a BIG could close the poverty gap by nearly 74%. Fast forward 19 years. Today, we are in, even, in an even worse position. At the height of COVID-19, when scores of people were losing jobs daily, I would argue most of them breadwinners, the Minister of Social Development mentioned the basic income grant again, just to raise hopes of people who were in dire need to survive the virus, the hunger and poverty. The, their hopes were dashed when reports of a meeting of the ANC NEC emerged and where the basic income grant was put on a back burner again, another ANC promise not kept. As recently as Wednesday of this week, after calls from members of this very house for the basic income grant, government once again said, let's discuss it. Discuss what exactly? We have done nothing but discuss it for 19 years. Where poor and vulnerable are concerned, papers are developed and ta tabled at committees, but never implemented. There is no doubt that a desperate need exists for government to pro provide some form of sustainable social security to its people. However, promises and proposals of security have been made since 2002 to no avail. It seems as if the ANC government's proposals are trotted out to the poor and vulnerable, dangled like a political carrot to secure electoral support and to be perceived as caring. There has been an old argument from government that there isn't enough funding for the basic income grant. This is hard to believe, Chairperson, as the Minister of Finance cut allocations to social grants during the last budget speech. This is morally indefensible. Social spending should be protected and prioritized. In, in order to provide sa a safety net for our most vulnerable, we need to fix the failures of the department. The start that starts with improving capacity, management and systems, eradicating corruption and fraud, maladministration and wasteful expenditure. We need a government that has the basics right. The truth is, Chairperson, no, South Africa no, can no longer afford the current no, government. I thank no, you. As Honorable Aris. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. My condolences to King Zuelitini and his family. May his soul rest in peace. Chairperson, long before COVID-19, the EFF have constantly called for the introduction of a basic income grant. In our 2014 election manifesto, we committed to investigating the possibility and practice of grants for unemployed people, in particular basic income grant. Long before the COVID-19 pandemic, the majority of South Africans were already living in dire economic situations, faced with poverty, unemployment, and inequality. COVID-19 has worsened these conditions, pushing more South Africans deeper into poverty. At the moment, approximately 18 million of the most vulnerable in our, in our society, which is mostly children, the elderly, and people with disability. However, Given high levels of poverty, unemployment and inequalities, there are millions of people with no or little income that is excluded from the social security program, condemning them to hunger and starvation. Far too many people live in poverty. More than half of the population live in poverty. Far too many people cannot find work. Just under 10 million people cannot find work. Far too many people cannot afford to feed themselves and their families. According to statistics presented to the Portfolio Committee, in June 2020, more than 14 million South Africans were food insecure prior to the COVID-19, and only 5.2 million people excess government feeding. Millions of people in this country could not be reached to be fed. On a daily basis, mothers with small children, elderly, disabled people sleep outside 
the, the offices of SASA and post office with the hope to be assisted by, the, by this entities. The humiliation and the painful situation in this country deepens every day. We shouldn't have waited for this long and not for a global pandemic to introduce a basic income to grant. South Africa has discussed the introduction of a basic income grant for more for well over 20 years now. A basic income grant is the most critical and decisive intervention in addressing poverty in South Africa. We are both politically, morally, and constitutionally obliged to it. The constitution entrains the right for everyone to have a social security that the ruling party has failed to deliver. The basic income grant is shameful. We want to take this opportunity to dismiss the nonsensical idea that if people receive a basic income grant, they will not look for work or will be dependent on that. Our people want to work, put a roof for their families and do it with dignity. We should not repeat the mistakes that we once made of listening to treasury that will throw around figures and use scaremongering tactics to continue with its artistic fiscal policies. The treasury has a tendency of being alarmist and restricted constructive debates without putting solution on the table. We know that President Cyril Ramaphosa deleted his tweet wherein he announced that the ruling party has decided to extend the basic income grant only to delete it a few minutes later because he takes instructions for treasury when it is supposed to be the other way around. A basic income grant will restore the dignity of many hopeless people in this country. Our people live in dehumanizing conditions, but a basic income grant is more than a grant. It is one way we can begin to fight homelessness, gender-based violence, and hunger. It is also a way to stimulate demand, give our people buying power and revive, uh, give our people buying power and revive the demand in the economy. The temporary the social relief in the stress grant should be made a permanent grant and should be increased at least to a thousand rand per month. I thank you. Thank you. I now invite Honorable uh, Fellow Mayor. Thank you very much, House Chairperson. May I start by remembering His Majesty King Goodwill's Wilatini Kabeki Zulu, the King of the Zulu Nation. Isilu Samabandla was passionate about the upliftment of South Africans. It was his life's work. He felt deeply the pain of the poverty of our people and always sought ways to address this. May his soul rest in peace. Chapers and the ruling party often speaks of a developmental state, but the sad reality is that we're fast moving towards an unsustainable welfare state. 27 years of mismanagement, corruption, unethical leadership and a lack of good governance has led to deepening levels of inequality. Where growing numbers of our people are desperate, hopeless and dependent on a mere Sasa grant alone for their survival. With each passing day, we are moving further and further away from the promised ideal of a better life for all. The 2020 Child Gage Report by the Children's Institute at UCT revealed last month in its report titled Slow Violence of Malnutrition that nearly half of South Africa's mothers and children went hungry for large parts of 2020. This, despite government's interventions. The study also revealed that poverty, unemployment and hunger rose dramatically during lockdown. 14 million people are hungry as we speak. As lawmakers, as those tasked with protecting the most vulnerable, this frightening reality should be keeping us up at night. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated the plight of the most vulnerable, but honorable members, poverty, starvation and deprivation has replaced the hopes and dreams of millions. It is against this background that we must consider a basic income grant. The IFP supports the call for such a grant to be implemented without further delay. But we must also ask ourselves some tough questions first, such as whether South Africa has the resources and capacity to roll out such an ambitious project. 
government's COVID-19 response has offered us some insights into these questions. Firstly, consider that Sasa continues to bleed millions each month and each year due to fraud, corruption, and illegal deductions from grant recipients. Every day, we are confronted with stories of government officials, police officers, syndicates, and other fraudsters looting from Sasa coffers. Yet, just two days ago, when I asked the Minister of Social Development what she has done since taking office in 2019 to stop the wide-scale looting of Sasa funds, meant for the poor, she had nothing to say about this. Then consider the unforgivable theft of food parcels during the lockdown period by ruling party officials with not a single person being in jail. And further consider that government officials paid and collected UIF and the 350 Rand grant for themselves. Again, nobody has been jailed for this. And then think about the countless people who've died in long sasa queues or those who were water bombed waiting on a little bit of government help. Simply put, this cannot be our reality if we are to consider a basic income grant. The basic income grant will not be sustainable unless we rid this government of all forms of corruption, mismanagement and poor service delivery. We need the criminal justice system that will deal harshly and ruthlessly with those who steal resources meant for the poor and vulnerable. The IFP believes strongly in self-help and self-reliance the basic income grant should be an enabler. It should enable people to seek job opportunities and stimulate economic growth. In addition, it is the IFP's conviction that a basic income grant must be implemented with support mechanisms such as monitoring and evaluation, skills development, and self-empowerment targets. Chairperson, uplifting South Africans out of poverty, hunger, and hopelessness should be our only mission collectively. By reprioritizing our resources carefully, we can do so. The big has been promised time and time again. Let us not just dangle a political carrot of hope again, but let us act. We can no longer afford governments in action. The IFP supports Good's proposal. I thank you. I now recognize Honorable Vessels. Thank you, Honorable House Chairperson. House Chair, we are in an unsustainable position. Poverty is increasing and the hopes and dreams of really eradicating poverty and bettering the livelihoods of South Africans are fainting away and fading away. Fact of the matter, Chairperson, is that we do need economic growth to actually sustainably eradicate poverty. We need job creation. I want to quote President Nelson Mandela, who stressed in his 1994 State of the Nation address that government would confront the scourge of unemployment, not by way of handouts, but by creation of work opportunities. We cannot have work opportunities when government is not prioritizing creating a conducive environment to actually stimulate the economy. We are faced, Chairperson, with a situation that is unsustainable. More and more people are dependent on social relief and social grants. The fact is that a lot of these grants are insufficient and that the actual only way to really uplift the people of South Africa is by job creation. Will we achieve job creation by a basic income grant. I hear what a lot of the other speakers have said, and I agree with the Honorable August that if government did not loot, if government did not allow the scourge of corruption in South Africa, a basic income grant would have been more affordable and more feasible. But still, it would not have been the solution to eradicate poverty sustainably. We need a responsible government which creates equal opportunities for all. We should consider systems such as a voucher system, which enables job seekers to get the opportunities and to be able to, at the end of the day, um, have money and disposable income to go for that job interview and to do what is necessary to get a job, but not necessarily a grant. Because, Chairperson, the reality is we are not in an ideal world. 
The reality is that we have a budget deficit. And the reality is that we are in a vicious circle where more social dependency creates a bigger budget deficit, creates the fact that government cannot spend money on what is actually important to grow the economy, and which then, in turn, creates a situation where taxes are raised, that is raised, companies then, at the end of the day, do not um, have money to invest and create jobs. They then get rid of certain employees, and unemployment then increases, and the dependency on grants increase. It's a vicious circle. We need change. We need real change and not only short-term change. And that can only be achieved by economic growth. And economic growth will only be achieved if there is really a change in the way we govern, in the way we address our problems, and the way we actually prioritize infrastructure development, service delivery, stop corruption, and create equal opportunities. Then we will eradicate poverty. I thank you. Thank you. I now recognize Honorable Sukers. Honorable Chairperson, the ACDP joins the House in expressing our sadness at the passing of His Majesty King Goodwill Zuelatini and extend our sincere condolences to the Zulu nation. There are two scriptural contexts which the ACDP wishes to highlight in the debate today. Jesus said, the poor you will always have among you. And secondly, Paul the Apostle says, the ox that works the field must not be muzzled. These two texts highlight the crucial combination for social stability, social welfare to provide for the poor and a fair wage for the man or woman who works hard. Our people want to work. They do not want to be lifelong grant recipients. We need new plans and actions that will empower our citizens, and I emphasize our citizens from every group and sector of society. Citizens and not the state to create the jobs we need. This will grow our tax, tax base, pull us back from the edge of the fiscal cliff we stand on, and ensure we have the resources to take better care of the poor. However, Chairperson, the state is a poor steward of what the people already pay in taxes. The state is unable to fulfill its constitutional duty set out in Section 27C, a duty to provide access to social security, including if they are unable to support themselves and their dependents, appropriate social assistance. This impotence of the state is demonstrated by the thousands of South Africans sleeping in front of our social services offices to apply for grants. Why has our state failed? Bef before all else, the state fails to appreciate that ta taxes are not just a number on a payslip. What our people give you is not just a number. It is a pair of shoes for a child. It is a more reliable car to get to work. It is a textbook for university. That is what that number means to them. They give that to you, the state, so that you will help their fellow South Africans and be, for, be there for them when they may need you. You have broken faith with us. Our state is corrupt. And when our civil servants or politicians sell our state, they are selling not just a number, but that child's pair of shoes and worse, that child's dream. But there is a less obvious form of corruption and that is the ineffective structure of our civil service. Our civil service needs urgent reform now. The civil, civil service is not fit for purpose. It needs a complete organizational redesign. We cannot expect a corrupt state to do this. So we need an open and transparent process that all of our people can scrutinize. With an effective civil service, we will find the money we need to provide the social net that is needed in this current crisis to pay back what we borrow and create the conditions for inclusive economic growth. Now is the time, Chair, for the good stewards, servant leaders, both in politics and the state, to come to the fore because the country needs it. I thank you. The time the UDM, the ATM,
I now invite Honorable Bilangolu. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Lava Sungula, you could use some marriage with Chavelela. Ega on Sikulu Yamazul, God wills the team. Lava is CK mission on Sikurana Munta. Condolence family. Let me say to them that uh, they should receive our condolences and believe in the Lord. Honorable Chairperson. Just pause. We, 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 we have uh, uh, somebody else. Uh, uh, OK. Go ahead, Honorable Bilangulu. Do you mean I should start, Chairperson? Continue, Bilangulu. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Honorable Chairperson. Leshi Minister wa Social Development na President wa Tiko Banga Shi Enda. Kubona Leshi Akumfuneto wa Zana na Makume na Kumeringwe na Makumambiri na Nkanu wa Tipondo. Iye mashwe ni kunyikiwa. Eka la wanga ringanela kufuniwa. Mwoni ya tsundu sha indo le inamunta na nfikani. Leshi Aku eka mchabiseki Aris na mchabiseki Fande Merve. Nam Chabseki Sukers. In the years of Anva South Africa, Avalabi Kutama, Marga Ravanikwa Grand, Lesvala Bakusona, Isakuja, Isambalo, Ixabelavana, Sa Shikolo, Inquas, Kambe Mirini, Ivan Lavanga Tiriku, Lavabona Lokobakum, Mali, three hundred and fifty, Emuntin Wabo Nakuana would told me. Nebula Bula, eh? Lavisis or Luaku and Luaku. Wa la Cape Town. La Anneville de Cocker. Anga kombi sale so ku imalile. Ikwete ku shabela vana vayena. Uniformo ya shkolo. Na inkwa sule spafane ku stresa a shkolo yi. La na kambe. Em. Esle. Wa twenty wa malembe. A kombi sa ku imalile. Ndirangu wa yena kumbe ndirangu waka wona. Ukwete ku ya ama shweni u haanya. Ikuba kwete ku shabela shakudia. La Vangana Matisha Langutales Nene, I end my friend, Langutales of Fumulonga in Lin. La Vanga Rikina Wana, Monique, African National Congress, I ingati, I ingati, I ingati Vavisi, Ekulava Kutsak Savona, and the Kakuana Lesakova Akivaina, Batla is a kile, Batela Kuma Funeto, Lovanga Ringanela Kukuma. Honorable Chairperson, in contextualization this debate, it remains significant to acknowledge that upon assuming office in 1994, the ANC-led government has, as one its primary task, uh, reforming the social protection system. This is likely because it did not represent the type of social system that should exist under a democratically elected government. This government had to ensure that it progressively addresses the social system that it inherited, which was fragmented, characterized by inequalities and low services for black people. The underpinnings of the system are deeply rooted in policy papers and resolutions of the ANC, which has consistently argued for integrated vision of social policy to promote human development, economic inclusion, and social stability. This social system was comprehensively articulated in the 1997 White Paper of Social Welfare. The White Paper advocates for a comprehensive social protection system and established minimum standard linked to a social wage. The social protection system was one that eliminated racial inequalities and introduced some new guarantees and benefits. Commissioned by the late former Minister Zola Sweia, the Taylor Commission of 2002 made profound recommendations that have had an impact on the future of the social protection system of the country. It was only the recommendation of the basic income grants 
that was rejected due to its flexibility and sustainability. Section 27.2 of the Constitution enjoys the state to take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve the progressive realization of the social security and social assistance. The challenge remains that the government still has not implemented a comprehensive social security system or for the country. The NC has been consistent on its call to expand and social wage with universal and subsidized access to basic social services. In its 2019 national election, it's committed to continue to maintain and expanding the social security system to protect the, the vulnerable and reduce, and reduce poverty. This commitment finds expression in the medium pre, a strategic framework as priority three, which commits to cons, cons, consolidating the social waste through reliable and quality basic services. The National Development Plan recommends that one of the main considerations for the future of social protection is the funding of the system. Ultimately, the state must generate sufficient income from the active groups in the population to be able to distribute to those that are less active while meeting other policy priorities. The debate on the future of the basic income grant in South Africa cannot be left out of the discussion when it comes to the expansion of the comprehensive social security system and in the future funding of the social protection system. Chairperson, globally the discourse on, the, on a universal basic income grant, it is, it is not new. In fact, COVID-19 has reviewed the call for countries to look at gradually implementing a universal basic income grant. The debate on the universal basic income grant has forced the countries to rethink their social protective measures, poverty reduction, and the role of the state in development. Currently, there is no country that has a universal basic income grant in place. Only two countries, Mongolia and Iran, have had a national universal basic income grant in place for a short period. Globally, a few countries have tested the feasibility of a universal basic income grant by piloting it in a small community within the country. Namibia is one of those countries and Kenya has been in a decade long pilot project. The financial sustainability, inflation leakages to pensions, relationships to minimum wages and the political economy are some of the factors that pilots cannot respond to and thus prevent a universal basic income grant from being fully implemented. There have been considerations in countries like India to implement AQUA's universal basic rural income as a variant of a traditional guaranteed minimum income program. A range of policy considerations banked by evidence-based research should inform the content of a big in South Africa. One of the crucial questions of a universal basic income grant is whether the grant will be a universal or which one of the critical questions of the universal basic income grant is whether the grant will be universal or will be based on a means test. Having a universal big will result in supporting persons already living beyond the minimum living wage or above the poverty line. Where else a basic income grant based on a means test has a specific target groups it seeks to cover, and in our socioeconomic context, a means test based basic income grant focuses on the poor amongst those between 18 and 59 who are not covered by the current social security system in desired and appropriate. Another dimension on the universal basic income grant debate is whether the grant will be co a conditional or unconditional. An unconditional grant is a cash payment without an expected responsibility or obligation. A conditional grant is a cash payment with an attached responsibility or obligation. Currently, our grant system has no conditional conditionalities. Honorable members, the social security system in Brazil called the Bolsa Familia program as conditionalities and education and health.
This has led to a healthier citizenry and improved education outcomes by encouraging beneficiaries to send children to school and health centers. Conditionalists required extra institutional and administrative capacity in order to implement programs to achieve the objectives of the condition. The social security system in Mexico called Prospera also has condition on education and health. Prospera promotes the linkages of recipients through expanded education services to youth through scholarship or vocational training and favors their access to formal employment through the National Employment Service. Chairperson, a basic income grant policy imperative of social security with conditionalists will require more institutional capacity. This is another trajectory uh, our social security system can embark on. Chairperson, the ANC RDP policies framework provides an important background to the evolution of the development welfare system because its principles and ethos are central to the process for transforming social welfare. This was the ANC's foundation for developing an inclusive new welfare system premised on the theory of social development. This theory of social development is one that is redressing past imbalances and about the empowerment of individual thank you, and communities. Thank you. I thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, House Chairperson. Chairperson, the topic is basic income grant. Now, the question that we need to ask ourselves, why is there a need for a basic income grant? Clearly, it's because there, are, uh, the, there is a very high level of unemployment in the country with very little hope of that improving in the near future. The number of homeless have increased. The number of people that are and now beyond the poverty line have increased in South Africa. We remain one of the most unequal societies in the world 27 years into democracy. Now, Honorable Chairperson, the easiest thing to do is to come out on this platform and ask us to give basic income grants, give this grant and another grant, and give social assistance and make this country into a socially dependent state. The question that I want to ask a governing in whichever singularly local government, what have you done at local government level to boost economic growth in your own areas, create jobs, and get your people to live a better quality of life. Currently, our peace people are not even able to access the most basic items like food, clothing, and shelter. Now, even at local level, if you could attract investment and boost the economies and keep people living in those rural areas, rather than them all going to urban areas, yes, indeed, you create a better society. But let us not speak to the audience because there's a local government election coming and you want their vote. Are we able to sustain a basic education grant at the moment? No. Do we have the money? No. But can we find the money? Yes. If we can just better manage, ensure there is less looting, ensure there's less corruption in the world? Yes, in the country particularly, yes, indeed, we can do that. But the question is, are we willing and have the passion and commitment? No. So, Chairperson, I think we all, even opposition political parties, to come together and find a solution because our people cannot survive in this 500 and or 600 and basic income grant. While the National Freedom Party supports us, we believe a lot more needs to be done to create a healthier and a better society so that we address the high levels of uh, inequality in the country. Finally, Chairperson, the National Freedom Party wishes to extend its condolences to the family of King Goodwill Zuelatini on his untimely passing on, on behalf of the National Freedom Party and the, our leaders, VZ Magwazam Sibi, we extend our deepest condolences to his family and the Zulu nation. I thank you. Thank you. The Independent Congress, the PAC, Al Jama. Thank you very much, Honorable House Chair. Honorable House Chair, 
Let me talk about the resources and capacity as raised by the Honorable uh, uh, Member van der Merwe. By the next tax year, by the next tax year, all taxpayers must get a basic income grant of 6,000 rand that they can credit to their tax liability. So when the time comes, this can be extended to those who are not taxpayers. Employers must pay an extra 1% of their payroll uh, uh, to fund this. This will help facilitate the implementation of a permanent basic income grant. We have the leadership of the Minister of Social Development to make all this happen, but she must get the support of the Minister of Labor and also the Minister of uh, uh, Finance. The grant must be given to all citizens between the ages of 16 to 59 uh, who are not receiving social grants. Why, Honorable House Chair, do I say as young as 16? The reason is that many of our learners, because uh, of poverty, they now have to get pregnant, get the child and get a grant to sustain them. So if we give them this grant at the age of 16, then we will solve the problem of teenage uh, pregnancies. As I would like to appreciate the decision taken by government to provide grants during pandemic. It has proven honorable members that the relief funds help put food on the table. Day in and day out, the post office became the home for the unemployed South Africans where we witness people sleeping outside for the funds. This is evident enough, honorable house chair, that many re to rely fully on the grant. The implementation of the basic income grant will benefit every member of society in their different ways. Allow me to express our condolences uh, uh, to the royal family, the presidency, the Zulu nation. Today, we are the Zulu nation. Thank you very much, Honorable House Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hendrik. As I call on uh, Honorable Abrams, I will also hand over to Honorable Lisoma. Honorable Hendr Hendricks, Ab uh, Abrams. Um, thank you, House Chair. And due to low cheating, I will not put on my video. Chairperson, we are all witness to the ever-growing and now faster than ever rate of unemployment in South Africa. We are a country in desperate need of solutions. Is the basic income grant one of them? or is it just opportunistic local government election campaigning? Our country's fiscal situation is clear. The state purse is deleted, depleted, actually empty. The social grant budget will be cut over the next few years. So empty that vulnerable SASA temporary disability grant beneficiaries were abandoned by the governing party in January, citing financial constraints as we heard in the house on Wednesday. The same governing party we are hoping will bring us a basic income grant. Chairperson, as previously said, this is not a new topic. And one would have expected that by now, a formal policy on the basic income grant would be presented so members could use this opportunity to get into the nuts and bolts of what a viable and implementable basic income grant could look like in South Africa. So far, all we have to go on is a June 2020 draft ANC party documented document circulated in the media with little focus on implementation and much focus on how to fund the basic income grant by making adjustments to the income tax structure. Hardworking South Africans are proposed to fit the bill. We must assist the vulnerable and we must find ways to reduce the inequality gap that continues to grow. But you cannot have a basic income grant and still have job killing policies such as BEE. You cannot demand hardworking South Africans to pay more tax while wasting revenue on SOE bailouts with corruption running rampant. The SRD 350 grant was needed and welcomed by all. It also gave us a glimpse into how a basic income grant could be managed. Those of us who sit on the Social Development Portfolio Committee will know in detail that the SRD, SRD 350 grant was riddled with problems and still is. 
There are thousands of people who never receive their money, standing day, at day and night at a post office with no grant in hand. So until such a time that we receive a formal basic income grant policy, opportunities. Africans do not want handouts. They want to be able to work, bringing about dignity, respect, pride, and a sense of self-worth. A debate focused on reality. More and more people depend on grants every year, but their quality of life is not improving. Why? Existing grants alone are too little to make a meaningful difference. Grants do not increase with inflation. Grants like the 450 and from April 460, child support grant is still below the food poverty line. Children constitute 51% living below the lower bound poverty line. Childhood stunting is still- Thank you, Honorable Abraham. Your time is up, ma'am. Thank you very since much. Since 1990. Uh, I have five minutes and that's only been three and a half minutes. No, but the front table is- I'm busy no, timing. One second, the front table is advising me that your time is up. Let me double check with the front table again. Okay, I've, I've you, paused my you, time on my side. Yes, no, it's At, fine. Okay, proceed. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much. The DA has repeatedly called for increasing of the child support grant to at least 561 band in line with the food poverty line. This will go further in ensuring children are more likely to receive the nutrition they require. Our focus must be on partnerships such as the German Development Bank and the Cape Town VPUU, who through an initiative called CoCare has funded 2,775 pregnant women from disadvantaged communities with a 300, 300 fortnightly digital grant. Pregnant, pregnant mothers from disadvantaged communities are vulnerable citizens too. In close the chair, until such a time that the house is provided with a formal policy, the need our offer on this these in South Africa in our economic justice policy, a sustainable development goal model and a plan for South Africa to beat the past and build the future. It is the only viable option we have to bring back dignity, respect, pride, and a sense of self-worth to the lives of South Africans. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you, House Chair Janji. Now I recognize Honorable the Minister of Social Development. Over to you, ma'am. The Honorable Minister. Minister Zulu. Um, Chairperson, thank you very much. I also have a, a network problem. I've had to leave my house because we have a load shedding. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Chairperson, um, for the opportunity. Um, Chairperson, may I uh, uh, Niti Jungum Duana was in Galactaba, Nami, Nitella Ukulumela, on the visitor, was in Galactaba. Niti Sibushum Gakulu, Isilo Setu, ever since Tanda Gakulu, who good will Zuelitini, Gabe Guzu, Kotama Mutula, the visitor, Indugu, Nesiswe Songe, Samazu. Sitela Uguti, Sitanda Zelwe, who was a Umsebens Wake, who had the guy. Iga Kulum Funuguti, Sibonga Imi Sebens Yake, Esiazi or Songe, Otwage, Agulona, Ilan and Namklange, Loguti, 
ngikhulume kakhulu ngalokho ucela nje ukuthi bese ngiya kuyinkulumo yanamhlanje Chepesin I wish to sincerely thank all the members who have spoken today in particular and in particular I want to thank uh, honorable August and his party for holding the bull by its horns and presenting this motion to the house a motion which comes at an opportune time and an opportune moment i do chaperson want to say this is not the time for us uh, to be playing politics around this issue because in my view this is an issue that should enable us to respond to the needs of the people of South Africa. And so, Chaperson, when I say, as a Minister of Social Development, the struggle for the poor people of South Africa who are poor, people of South Africa who are confronted with poverty and hunger, people of South Africa who are confronted by unemployment, inequality, and poverty, this is the right moment for us to start somewhere, as Honorable Sean August said to us. He said, compassion and justice for all. This is the moment for us to do just that. This is the moment for us, as um, Honorable Hendricks just said now, when, we are, when he spoke, a time for me as a Minister of Social Development, my department and my entities to get the necessary support from government departments and government at all spheres of a government to appreciate this opportune moment of ensuring that we move beyond discussion, we move beyond policy proposals, we move beyond anything else that has been done in the past because the past, it is the African National Congress that puts the discussion on the basic income grant. And I think all the members of the African National Congress who spoke today already indicated exactly the journey that we have taken to be where we are today. And therefore, thanking all members of uh, this uh, house today across the political spectrum who are saying to us, it's no longer a question of whether it is a question of how, when, and it is a question of who do we bring on board to make sure that this discussion moves beyond just a discussion. I want Chairperson to also clear this um, as I speak, that the issue of the basic income grant has been brought back on the table. And may I say to all the members, who think that this basic income grant was brought back on the table simply because we are looking at election. Can I dispel that notion? Because it was at a time when we were discussing what must happen after the, the, the 350 social relief of distress that was announced by President Cyril Ramaphosa. Right at the beginning, when we started implementing it, I asked the department, frankly and honestly, to say, can we look at what else we can be able to do to make sure that when the time comes that the, 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 the 350 SRD ends, we have something that we can put on the table to make sure that there is sustainability. But also, we, I requested the department to say to the department, let's start looking at research and find out what research has been there with something that can be sustainable. Honorable Chairperson, I put it to this mini debate and this house today that there was no thinking of any election at that point in time. There was only a thinking of what can we do and do better for the people of South Africa, especially those that we call the missing middle. It was at that time, uh, honorable members, that the department, uh, which I was new in, by the way, then told me, the units that had been working on this, uh, told me that there had been 
a long drawn discussion about the basic income grant. And I wish to thank both uh, Brenda and Brenton um, on this point because they are the ones from the department who then said to me, Minister, there is proposals, there are policy proposals that were put to the department quite a while back and they traced it back to the time which was uh, uh, elaborated here in this discussion. It was at that time, uh, Honorable Chair, that I then said, can we look at the document so that we can then be able to present that document back to the African National Congress, which had proposed it in the very first place. I said, can we dust it and put it, put it back? Because in my view, hearing you, I don't think we need to start from scratch looking for something when there is something that is already available. And they put that on the table. And the first thing we did, uh, honorable members, was to then go back to Prof. Taylor, who I realized that this document that was there was produced uh, by Prof. Taylor, which was called Social Protection and Pathways um, to a Basic Income Grant. Uh, they then called it uh, Beyond COVID-19. And Prof. Taylor, I must also thank her at this point in time, because she was very excited about the fact that we were bringing back the work that they had done that long ago, and they were able to put it back on the table. And honorable members, so let us dispel the notion. This has got absolutely nothing to do uh, with elections. This has got everything to do with the African National Congress responding to the challenges and the needs of our people, something that has been expressed here by all members across political parties, that we need a basic income grant. As to what form and what shape it should be, this is what we should be discussing as members so that we are united in our approach because I have great respect for the work that is done by the honorable members in their oversight. And I'm also thinking that members are going to be able to assist us um, in ensuring that uh, the basic income grant goes beyond discussion and debate. Honorable Chair, I also do want to say that I listened also clearly to the Minister of Finance when he spoke, and in particular, when he spoke recently. It was in the words of the Minister of Finance himself who was saying that we cannot afford to have so many poor people. We cannot afford to have the numbers of the unemployed and, and, and those that do not have jobs growing without us responding. And therefore, the issues that are being raised by members here in terms of whether we can afford it or not, our approach as a Department of Social Development is that we should be asking ourselves the other question. Can we truly afford to have people who go to sleep hungry? Can we afford so much unemployment? Can we afford that missing middle of people not being able to even go and, and go and look for a job, get into a taxi or get into a bus or get into something? Can we afford that? The question that we need to respond to is, can we afford to have anyone in South Africa in a country that is wealthy, never mind the fact that, of course, our economy is not doing very well. The question that we need to answer is, Honourable Minister, start wrapping up. Sorry, Honourable Minister, start wrapping up. Your time is up. Thank you. Okay, Chairperson, I think what I, I, I would like to say that the most important thing that we need to do now is to find pathways towards introducing the basic income grant. It is for us to mobilize for a social compact so that we can be able to implement it. Government alone cannot implement it. We need to work together, private, public, people-centered approach. And I am sure that we are putting it on the table because we believe it is possible. And I'm making it as a call to us all to say the African National Congress has brought back this discussion because Thank we you, are Honourable Minister. for our people. Thank you very Thank much, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Now I recognize Honorable August. Over to you, sir. 
Thank you, Honorable Chair. I appreciate almost every one of us in support of this basic income grant. And I want to thank Minister Zulu for committing to take up this issue with the executive colleagues to start this process. I agree that it is a question of how soon we can implement it. Let me remind this house that the Minister of Finance introduced a zero-based budget. So although I mentioned earlier that the big is not a new idea, we are, are entering a new budgeting approach. This places the responsibility for each of us to mobilize our respective parties to lobby for a basic income grant. It requires us to reduce non-essential budgets, reduce the waste and stop corruption so that we have more funds available for critical spending like the big. All municipalities, provinces and national departments and SOEs must cut their waste and spending to support the country in this effort. Every study on big has shown that it is affordable if government prioritizes in the right places. Pilots on basic income grants have already been run in countries like Iran, Morocco, Mexico, Philippines, and Indonesia. To my colleagues, the Honorable Vessels from the Freedom Front Plus, a basic income grant pilot in Namibia found that the majority of people in the community were able to increase their work or self-employment and that income has risen more than the amount of the grants. The evidence also found a decrease in child malnutrition. Honorable Chair, the evidence is overwhelmingly in the support of the big, and the need for this essential relief is critical. We cannot afford not to fund big. Extreme poverty is like COVID. It is upon us, whether we like it or not. But the action to reduce this impact is within our, within our collective action. In the same way, we had to reprioritize budgets to respond to COVID. We must look to also reprioritize our budget to address extreme poverty and inhumane hunger. We could not afford to ignore COVID and we cannot afford to ignore extreme poverty. I thank all the political parties for the overwhelming support for the big and hope to see this same level of vocal support during this year's budget debates and votes. The basic income grant is a good idea and is essential to overcome extreme poverty and inhumane hunger. Since there is no opposition to the grant expressed here, I trust our government will finally implement it and implement it now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Members, that concludes the debate and the business of this special mini plenary. The mini plenary will now rise. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are in this together.